You may have noticed that behind me, in the center of the picture right here, is a Japanese maple. And on that Japanese maple this morning was perched a hummingbird as small as my thumb, really, no bigger than my thumb. And that hummingbird, well, and the Japanese bay maple also, inspires in me a, what I'm gonna call secular reverence secular worship, a sense of worship, a sense of reverence that does not need to involve uh, a sense of God, a sense of creator, a sense of intelligent design. And I think that there are a lot of us uh, tree huggers out there that get it, get that secular worship and aspire to it and look for opportunities for uh, quiet out there in the woods to get that um, secular reverence and secular worship. And <clears throat> I think that your sense of it would be enhanced if you'll get a hold of a book called Rare Earth. It's by a couple of professors from the University of Washington. All the smartest people are at the University of Washington. And what they suggest is, is that, uh, you know, Carl Sagan uh, proposed that when you look at the billions and billions of stars out there, well, if there's billions and billions of stars, well, then there must be billions of planets. And if there's billions of planets, then there must be hundreds of thousands of planets that are capable of supporting life. And if there's hundreds of thousands of those, well, then there must be tens of thousands that could support intelligent life. And the authors of, of Rare Earth propose eh, it takes a hell of a lot more than just uh, the statistical overwhelming of that there has to be, you know, in all this. So, for example, uh, a planet to support uh, advanced life, complex, uh, complex life, and see a hummingbird and a Japanese maple, those are complex life. And for a planet to allow complex life to evolve, the planet um, has to, among other things, have a an iron core, a molten iron core that is creating a magnetic field because then the magnetic field that it creates shields the life forms from rays from outer space that would kill uh, complex life. Now, right there is something fascinating. For, their, for the uh, planet to have a molten iron core, it had to have been created by a third or fourth generation star. Now there's an amazing thing for you to think about. Your body is made up of the detritus of a third or fourth generation star that has exploded and then congealed into a planet that allowed your life form to evolve. A uh, first generation star would be mostly hydrogen and from that star you'd get the fusion to helium and maybe some lithium and then that star would explode and then those pieces would come back together again and then you get the fusion to let's I don't know oxygen carbon nitrogen <clears throat> and now this is the danger of listening to a babbling fool who knows just enough to be dangerous you know I don't, I'm taking a guess at these things so then that second generation star, it explodes and its pieces then congeal back again through gravity. And now you're forming some heavy stuff, aluminum and iron and plutonium. Okay, uh, along another thing that a advanced complex life has to have is there has to be a moon. Um, and I can't quite remember why it is that a moon makes such a huge difference. But one thing is that the planet um, has to keep a rotation where the uh, rotational axis is perpendicular to the orbital 
uh, rotation around the sun. Because you see, if that rotational axis turns toward the sun, then the uh, pole that's toward the sun fries, nothing can live there. And then the pole away from the sun is frozen, nothing can live there. And what you get then is a little strip around the equator that maybe can support life, except that a planet that does that, and apparently doesn't have a moon, uh, will wobble back and forth and which will, you know, destroy whatever life got created around the equator. Uh, the solar system where complex life can evolve has to have a Jupiter. Why? Because you need a massive planet that is like this asteroid vacuum cleaner. Our Earth has been whammed several times by massive asteroids meteorites that have destroyed life or at least brought life way down and uh, it would have been much much worse without Jupiter. So the list, well okay wait one more thing, the location of the solar system has to be just the right distance from the center of the galaxy. I mean is that crazy bullshit? For your, for you complex life for that hummingbird back there for that maple uh, Japanese maple to have evolved we have to be just exactly the right distance from the center of our galaxy because of the amount of <clears throat> radiation that emanates from the center of the galaxy and I don't really remember why it is that <clears throat> we don't want to be too far out so you gotta go read this book fascinating stuff honey I'm telling you you deserve secular reverence you deserve secular worship and I'm telling you I worship the complex life that you are